Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. So today we have Dr. Jagdeep Singh here. So Dr. Jagdeep is working uh, at the Agri Agriculture Advisor at University of California, Agriculture and uh, Natural Resources. Uh, so, so this is the fifth video of the series which we are talking with different agricultural students, scientists who came here to do masters, PhD or currently working in academia, industry or different non-profit organization. So previously we spoke, we have spoken with people working in plant breeding domain or agro plant breeding domain or molecular biology, entomology. So today we're going to talk more about the agronomy. So how a person with the agronomy major or agronomy background can come here and do masters in agronomy or a PhD at the end they can join as a faculty. So we will see what Dr. Jagdeep has here to share with us. So with this, so uh, uh, welcome Dr. Jagdeep to the channel. Yeah, th thank you so much for the invitation. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Can you please introduce uh, like yourself to the audience, like what your background is like and where you are in India you are from and what was and where you studied in India? Oh, hello everyone. My name is Jagdeep Singh. I come from Punjab, uh, India. I did my undergrad from Punjab Agricultural University uh, back in Lutiana, India. And afterwards I moved to New Mexico State University for my master's and afterwards did my PhD at Auburn University, Alabama. But yeah, thanks for inviting me here. Oh, okay. So as you said, you did your undergrad from PAU itself. So was agronomy your major which inspired you to come here in New Mexico and do a master's in agronomy? Or like, was your interest in the first year or the second year when you started thinking agronomy is the one you want to explore more? So uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you a story. So when when I was about to join the my undergrad at Punjab Agriculture University, I, in my mind, I was thinking when, as soon as I finish my undergrad, I'll opt for or go for a job back in Punjab. Uh, but I think uh, it was in my third year, I believe, when I got to know that there is there is this opportunity that student can pursue their higher study uh, in in USA or or other other countries. So I started talking with 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 friends and you were one of them who, who guided me that this is the process. I did talk with my senior as well, like what is the prospective? And after having those discussions, I talked with my family, like, hey, this is the opportunity, should I go for it? And they, I think, readily supported my uh, my idea. Uh, and back to my question, uh, back to your question that, yes, I always uh, wanted to work in extension system. I do not come from a farming background, so I didn't know much about when I was joining this university uh, back in Lutiana. But as I started reading and had those interaction with the farm, uh, farming community, I knew in my mind that, okay, uh, I need to go further deeper into these studies and do some research oriented work. Oh, okay. So uh, uh, thanks for sharing the whole story around what inspired you come to agronomy and how you came to agriculture domain. So mm -hmm. I think many people are in this boat as well. Like it's not like the agronomy or agriculture field is only for a person with the agricultural family background. So this is kind of a science where anyone with the medical, non-medical background in plus two, they should come and explore it and contribute more to the agriculture or the farming community. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And then uh, when you were in undergrad, you might have prepared for a couple of uh, exams. I feel like for coming abroad, and if so, when you started preparing for those, is there any timeline? Is there any ideal timeline, I would say, according to you, where someone should follow if they wanted to come abroad just after their undergrad? Yeah, I think I started late. Uh, it was almost finishing my third year. And that time I started preparing for it. Uh, the ideal time I would shoot for is around second year after completion of second year just have have those connections build up with your seniors and make like linkedin profiles see what others are doing and if you think that you also want to do it don't don't only see their uh, instagram story that can be misleading uh, look for their linkedin their professional handles and see if, if that inspires you if it does start preparing early i think second year should be should be a good time to start preparing for any IELTS or 
I don't know if if any university still require, requires GI. So so those exams, I think so. Yeah, so as uh, as we were talking before, so GRE is not that required in all the universities. But Yes. if there are two students who has exact same like CV, all the profile, TOEFL score, but if one has a GRE and a better score in GRE, I would say the person might get an edge, but it's very rare that will happen that all the other things in your CVs are matching. So if you don't have the GRE and if you don't have the time, you don't need to invest a lot in that. So, so many universities are going away from that, as you said, yeah. So other thing, uh, other question I have for you is like, you came here for a master's and after that you did your PhD. Did you follow the exact same route, like getting the master's as a PhD position? I know when you're in a master's, you might have sent so many emails and so many cold emails, what we say, and it's very rare we used to get a reply back. So was it the same as for PhD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that time. I think uh, when, when I think you almost got that offer letter uh, from WSU when you we were just starting it and uh, yeah, having I still remember the, those memories. So yeah, I think back in undergrad we used to uh, send out many many emails, maybe hundreds, and those were uh, I wouldn't advise sending those kind of cold emails without much context to the email. If you are composing an, an email, at least read to whom you are sending it, make it uh, crafted so that it is it is more aligned to that professor's profile and highlight like how you can uh, help build his program or improve it further. So I think uh, back in, uh, in a back in undergrad days i think i it, it they were those days were very struggling like you are sending that that many emails and still not getting any reply but don't don't get discouraged sometime may, maybe the timing is so off like they do the professor not all the time they have access to the email sometimes they are working outside so prefer shooting that email around i think early in the morning 8 or 9 a.m or or during the lunch time I think that would be the best time to reach out to them. But as I entered into my master and when I was about to finish my master, I think I still remember, I think I sent out three to four emails for my PhD and, and the professor that I had in my PhD, I had uh, an opportunity to meet him in person at one of the annual meetings. So that also helped, but, but, But yeah, like sending out from 100 email to only four, it's, it's a drastic reduction. No, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, once you're in a master's, you know, this is the only domain you want to work and you might shortlist 20, 30 labs. So you Yes. just want to reach out to those. But in undergrad, we have like wide open era. Oh, I can do agronomy. I can do soil science. I can work on Yeah. agronomy. Some Yeah. people can think, oh, I can go plant science, other fields as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to explore, but yeah. you need to have like a a, a clear mindset of to to where you want to pursue your higher study but yeah Sure. And the other question I have for you is like, so if you have to repeat the whole process again, and you know, there's the Jagdeep saying who has this kind of a skill set in a CV, and that's how the person got a master's, what things you will improve in your CV, in your undergrad that could raise your chances of getting a master's a little bit quicker, and then you know more about the field, you are more confident coming here. what skill set or things you might change going back I think uh, if I have to do it all, all, all over again, uh, the skills that I would like to add on to my CV uh, should be focusing on data analysis. So learning any data analysis tool like R or, or maybe some QGIS skill, like remote sensing skills, that would that would greatly help me. And, and on top of that, uh, if I could assist some seniors with their... ongoing research trial to get a feel of it, like how a research is conducted. And I think those three things, uh, I don't think I did, I did a good job Yeah. back then, but if I have to do it again, I think these, these three components I would like to include.
Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And when you say the data analysis or this remote sensing tool like Q, QGIS or and so my so what will be your suggestion for the students how they can start learning those? Do they need to pay some courses or like register some classes? How usually they can start with those? I think to begin with, they can just uh, do a YouTube search and and see how how it is applicable. Just do like what is QGIS? How it is applicable to that particular field? There is tons of uh, YouTube video that that they can follow and. Again, if they want to go for some paid courses, they are also available. Like I, I still uh, register some courses at Udemy or Coursera. Those are, I think, the website that I still go to. So to begin with, do a YouTube search. If you feel that this is what you want to do, then you can go for a paid course. But also before registering a paid course, ask your senior or your friends like, hey, how applicable it is. Maybe it is just... They are just asking for money and the, the content is missing. So always, always get a second opinion. Yeah, okay. And the other question I get a lot from the students over the YouTube as well as sometimes the LinkedIn. What is the job market for the agricultural students here in the US? I know when you're in India, when you're doing undergrad or master's or a PhD, sometimes they have to wait a lot to become an agriculture officer or become a professor? Is this the same kind of a, uh, weight here in the US? Or do you think getting a good, reputable job after a master's or a PhD is, is easy or like a little bit, a little bit, I would say, or high chances? Is it getting high chances to get that job? So based on your experience, what you would like to share? If if we compare India versus US, uh, there is a lot of opportunity here in the United States. Uh, but yeah, depend upon your profile as well. But still, if we directly compare like where there are more opportunity, definitely in mm -hmm. US, there are tons, tons of opportunity. You don't have to, you don't have to go for general job, just just keep upgrading your skills and have something in your mind, like what is your short term goal, like after three, four years where you see yourself or after five, six years and keep building your profile, keep adding those skills. Um, it's, it's going to be very soon. So I think there is there is a good job market here in, in States. Yeah, and if we compare the both the countries, the yes. strategies and the funding scenario for the agriculture is completely different than people. Yes support early career researcher here a lot. So there are like so many resources where you can go and get all those help as well. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. So just to wrap it up, so any last advice you have for the undergraduate student who are thinking of coming abroad? Any last advice you would like to give it to them? I think don't do don't don't take too much stress. Uh, it will it will happen if you're sending out emails not getting any response back don't get discouraged it will happen and yeah keep 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 sending out emails and have a senior or a mentor uh, regularly guide you i think that is very important so keep in touch with your seniors and and yeah it, it, it will happen just just don't be don't be disappointed if it is uh, getting a little slower for you. Sure, yeah. And that's a very big advice. Many students go through this phase. They yes. will be like, no, I'm not getting a reply. I'm stopping, I'm stopping this process. So yeah, having a patient. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So with this, yeah, thanks a lot for coming here and sharing your experiences and how you came here and how you're currently working. I hope this is helpful for the students in the agriculture field and especially who are thinking to come here to do master's or a PhD in agronomy. So once again, thanks a lot for your time. Yeah. 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 Happy to help. Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone. Yeah. Bye.